Becky Thomas works as a senior nurse and is a fit and active woman in her early 40s with a particular love of the outdoors and cycling. In early 2014, Becky began to feel generally unwell and visited her GP several times with symptoms that were causing her to worry and to think there was something not right. In April 2014, Becky was diagnosed with bowel cancer. In November, Becky had surgery to remove a tumour, but was also given the news that the cancer had spread into her liver as well as her abdomen. Because of the diagnosis that the cancer had progressed to Becky's abdomen and was therefore no longer contained, surgeons were not able to operate on Becky's liver. Becky underwent five rounds of chemotherapy. A CT scan then showed abnormalities in Becky's lungs. Lymphedema was suspected, but further tests revealed that it was not cancer in Becky's lungs, but sarcoidosis. Consequently, the cancer diagnosis in Becky's abdomen was also reassessed as sarcoidosis, meaning that the cancer was, after all, contained in Becky's liver and surgeons were now able to operate. In December 2016, Becky underwent surgery to remove a third of her liver and also a gallbladder. Becky's treatment was successful and four months later Becky returned to work. In this short video, Becky remembers how she felt during and after cancer treatment. She talks about issues related to survivorship and how primary care can support people during and after their treatment. It was the 2nd of February um, was the date that I had an appointment with the consultant um, for my histology results from the liver surgery. And they were fantastic results. They were better results than I could even wish for because what they showed was that the chemotherapy had worked and actually what was left in my liver was actually scar tissue and it wasn't, there was no cancer left in my liver. So I mean, that's just, you know, fantastic. But I, I, I couldn't cope with that news very well. One of, the, one of the big things for me is around this whole concept of survivorship. So, it's great to be able to sit here and tell you today that I'm cancer free. But I, for about six to eight weeks, I really struggled with that news and I found it really hard to, to get my head around it. And it sounds awful saying it out loud, but I almost went through a process of grieving. I went through a process of, and whether that's a delayed process of grieving, I don't, I don't know. But I went through this process, I've, I felt like I had to remind people what I'd been through because people would say, oh, fantastic, you can get on with your life now. And part of me, I thought, oh my God, I'm turning into some twisted, bitter person. But part of me inside was like, you don't know that. It's not that easy. I can't just forget about everything. I can't just move on from what's happened to me. You know, it's, it's not that easy, you know? And I remember putting the phone down on my father because my father said to me, I don't understand what's the matter with you. Why are you? you know why because I'd been a bit snappy with him and he's like I don't understand what's the matter you've just been given this great news why are you acting this way and you know I put the phone down you don't understand you know I put the phone down on him it was a really really tough time so for me there's something around survivorship and since then I've talked to people about it and I know that that's something wider than just me and I know a lot of people um, really really kind of struggle in the aftermath and now that's whether they're living with cancer or, or they've been given the great news that they're, they're cancer free. So, um, you know, one of the key messages for me, I think, in all of my journey for, for health professionals in particular is um, listen, listen to your patients, listen to what they're telling you because there may be something they're telling you in just an informal conversation that actually means something in terms of what they're going through and then you can pick up on that and offer them some support and offer them some strategies and some coping strategies. There's something about public confidence in the health professional, no matter where you work, whether that's a GP, whether that's a nurse, whether that's OT, physio, whatever. You know, we we are literally putting our lives in, in, in or people are putting their lives in my hands. And now I'm in a situation where I've put my life in, in somebody else's hands. So you you need to have confidence in that individual in those individuals and the service that they're providing that they got your best interests at heart and they're going to do the best they can for you and I have no doubt that nobody does does anything intentionally or doesn't do anything intentionally I, I have no doubt of that you know I felt very cared about but sometimes I didn't feel cared for if you see what I mean I didn't have that trust that confidence 
um, that the right thing was happening. Um, for me and there could be a number of reasons for that and I do wonder sometimes if some of it is about the fact that I, I am a health professional and therefore I'll know things and then maybe some things weren't made explicit to me so it wasn't made my key worker wasn't made explicit to me so I didn't know there was somebody that I could um, and then I had this conversation funny enough with them afterwards and they said yeah we gave you a card and I was like I don't know if that was enough at that time you know I'd just been given some devastating news um, and I obviously didn't take it in so you know it's, it's, it's communication is key to everything isn't it it just absolutely is um, really clear um, communication and making sure that the person that you're talking to or the person you're giving the news to has really taken that in and what it means for them and what they've understood by it really I think is really important. You know having gone through a journey like this you do spend time where you reflect and I'm quite a reflective person anyway I think um, and yeah and on in in that reflection I've thought and because of the job I do I've thought to myself hmm, maybe that could have been a bit better you know um, and maybe we need to do something about that, maybe we need to make it better. And the only way I can do that is by sharing my story and for, for people to maybe just listen, even if they just take a few key words, words of what I'm saying and it makes them think about their next patient in a different way, then I feel that, you know, my, my story's been worthwhile in some ways.